Greetings and welcome back to Factorio. I'm Catherine of Sky, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you all about nuclear power. Now the first thing we need to do with nuclear power is get the uranium uh, and we need to mine it from the uranium patches which no doubt you'll have seen glowing uh, in the world. So I have come with my train which is filled with sulfuric acid uh, which I pump into tanks here uh, and those get piped down to the mines, which are right over here. And all you need to do is plop down a regular miner. Um, if you look at the miners, they are, you know, they're just regular looking, but when you put them over the uh, uranium ore, they change into these ones with tanks in them. Make sure that all of the miners have access to the tanks. It's very easy, you can, um, or all the miners have access to the sulfuric acid. They do not need to be connected on all the outside edges at all, by any means. The sulfuric acid flows through them. As you can see here, it goes all through these guys. I could connect these guys to that end or whatever, but they do not have to have pipes all the way through. Also make sure that they're powered. So they're gonna mine all of this beautiful green stuff, which is in turn going to go into our trains. So here is the these are the pumps that are attached to our wagon. Um, basically for these guys to work, they need to be powered and they need to be uh, next to the track. Uh, they are one by two now instead of uh, one by one as they were in the previous version of the game. And you can only have one per uh, section of this wagon. There are three sections to the tank wagon and you can separate them so that they don't intermix fluids. So um, that's the way to do that. There is no benefit whatsoever to putting, you know, six pumps on this side and six on the other. They have this uh, fluid thingy that connects to the top and the top only has one uh, inlet outlet. All right, so now that we've got mining under control and our wagons full of uranium, let's go back to the base. We are now arriving back at the base station where I have set up our uh, station to load the sulfuric acid with the pumps. It's, here's a better view of the arms of the pumps that attach to the top of the tankers. Um, and you can see the sulfuric acid flowing through the little pumps there. And um, this, set, this train is set to leave when the cars are full and I've actually stopped this. But here we have just basic unloading of those materials of the uranium ore. Uh, and I've stopped this just to give you a better uh, perspective on things. Now here we need to convert this ore with the um, uranium processing uh, recipe. So we're going to get a centrifuge. We place it down and choose the recipe for uranium processing. These guys take in all the materials and then I have allowed them to put them on the line behind. They take in 10 uranium ore and you have a 90 something percent chance of getting the uranium 238 and a very, very, very tiny percentage of getting uranium 235, which is the material we're using for fuel. So these guys also I have put, this is sort of an end game setup, which I will have in my Google Drive Blueprints folder. Each of these machines has two Productivity 3 modules, enabling us to get a plus 20% bonus every time we process uh, this stuff. Um, and that's really important because Uranium-235 is actually quite rare. Uh, ignore what you see in my inventory, I've been having this process going for many hours. Um, anyway, the uh, machines are surrounded by beacons with speed modules, enabling us to just process a lot of this faster. Now all of this gets shuffled along a belt to a sorting station and here we have passive providers on the top and we have regular chests on the bottom. That's very important. Uh, at the top we've got the 238 going into there and as you can see several of these chests are completely full. Uh, and in the bottom, we are taking out the uranium-235. Um, these will also get put down onto the bottom belt here so we can start the Covarex enrichment process. And let's just go ahead and do that. These, this process starts with a, um, a centrifuge. You select the, the recipe for the Covarex enrichment process. And what this does is essentially guarantees you a supply of uranium-235 as long as you supply it with 238. 
uh, the process takes in 40 235 and returns 41 235 with the addition of um, three extra uranium 238. It takes in five, it gives you two back. So you get a little bit of an exchange there. And the way this setup works is we have the machine here. This inserter takes out the 235, puts it in a chest. This chest is linked to this chest. Um, and then it's fed right back into the machine right here. And this inserter only puts this back on the belt if we have greater than 40 in the chest. So let's see how this works. Let me put in um, another 20, do we need? 20, 20. Let's grab this. So here it's gonna go, do the process. And as it's chugging along, and I love the graphics of this, it looks very, very cool. <laughs> I love it. So what's happening is that the uranium is getting shuffled around and we have one extra in, in the hopper there. And as this keeps going around and around, we're gonna continue to get more and more each go round. Now you can, uh, and there, there's the uh, 235 coming out. And this belt goes out this way, connects this way, and, and goes right back into the chests. So basically what happens is when you are, when you output enough for this chest to be full, like if we fill this thing with the 235, um, uh, it will basically process and process and process and we'll have plenty uh, getting in this chest. Let me just put some more in. Well, we can even put more in here. Um, so basically, once you get 40 in this chest, and I've changed this inserter to um, change the stack size to one, so we don't take out any more than, than the one that's over the amount. But basically, this will go around, will come down here, and will go back on the belt. Uh, and that is so that we can feed other machines in the line here. So if we go ahead and connect this belt here, and I'm gonna get some more inserters because I, uh, I took them out so that we could um, do this, you know, do one machine at a time. You'll wanna start with one machine and then you can start adding a second machine and then a, th uh, a third and fourth. But basically two machines share a set of chests and at some point you can change this chest. So instead of 40 in the chest, and that's just, you know, um, sort of doomsday number, oh my gosh, we need 40. Uh, these stack inserters transfer things so fast and they have a stack size of 12 that you could change this to something like if it's greater than 12 then you can output onto the line because if the machines are um, are needing stuff these insur inserters will transfer immediately. All right, so what happens when we have plenty of uranium in our system? Let's find out. We can, well, we'll take out some of these stacks. Oh gosh, that's not what I want to do. Come on, there we go, whatever. Okay, so we're gonna have plenty of uranium. All of these guys are gonna get filled to the brim with stuff. Um, what happens is at the end, when this whole process is backed up, it's going to go into a provider chest. And as you can see, I already have plenty in that provider chest. Um, and that is going to go into the fuel cell creation. Now, at some, if you need um, lots, if you need nuclear power, do not have a huge line of these until you can support it. You can actually manually make these fuel cells or have a special requester chest saying, okay, if you have X amount, transfer them into a provider uh, so that you can start making fuel cells because fuel cells are what is going to make your power plant run. All right, so let's get on to the power. Oh, here is another machine that we have. Once the nuclear plants drain the fuel cells, you'll come up with empty fuel cells. Uh, they look like this. They're called used up uranium fuel cells. And this machine basically requests them from the network and then puts out the extra um, three uh, which I'm call it's the uh, uranium 238 puts it on the belt and again the belt goes back into the whole sorting system so this can all be reused reprocessed and put back into the Covarex enrichment process right let's go now to our reactors 
To begin your nuclear setup, the first thing you're going to need is a reactor. Now, um, these are very, very expensive to make, but as you can see in your inventory, they tell you exactly how much uh, energy they'll put out once they're placed and powered. They will produce 40 megawatts of energy. Now, how does that translate into the rest of the items? Well, um, these are heat exchangers, which are similar to the boilers of early steam power and these guys take um, they uh, take 10 megawatts of heat and transfer that heat into making steam so they're not on right now because they're not actually hot enough they need to reach a temperature of 500 degrees in order to do that and as you can see the um, nuclear reactor has actually been going on for some time it uses fuel very very slowly each of these fuel cells lasts 200 seconds uh, and it does take some time to get up to max temperature. But these guys are heating up as you can see as I mouse over them they say the temperature 460 degrees and such. Um, so what we do is take that value of 40 uh, megawatts and divide that by our 10 megawatts giving us four heat exchangers for a single nuclear reactor. Now, how do we calculate how many steam turbines? Now, these are very similar to the steam engines of early steam power, but they create a lot more power. Uh, these guys have a very curious, oh, there they come on. Um, they have very strange numbers because the devs love to give us odd ratios. These have a maximum power output of 5.8 megawatts. Now, this is only visible in the tooltip, as you can see. If you mouse over, it doesn't say. Um, but what you do is you take your 40 megawatts of the reactor, divide that by 5.8, and you're left with 6.8, uh, and that would equate to 7, which is exactly what we have here. Um, these guys are connected to the heat exchangers with regular pipes. These are just, you know, your standard pipes that you can draw on the ground like this, and um, those transfer the heat from these guys, from the heat exchangers into the turbines. Of course, the heat exchangers do need to be fed with a water line, which is connected to that lake right below us. Uh, these heat pipes, uh, you must keep in mind that they can only go a limited distance and the heat actually gets lower. As you can see next to the reactor, it's 556 degrees, but as we go up, it gets less and less. So these have a very limited distance that they can travel before they have insufficient heat in order to heat the heat exchangers. And these guys look like this in the inventory. You can just kind of draw them like, like pipes. They connect to each other automatically. So that's pretty handy. Now this reactor is being fueled with um, a requester chest that you definitely can fuel it with belts if you like. Uh, I tend to only request 10 fuel cells because they use them up so very slowly as you can see it's not really necessary to have more than that. The output chest is also important. You can use a passive provider if you have a requester chest on your uh, reprocessing thing that requests like 20,000. Um, but I tend to use an active provider. It can be good practice if you're playing Bob's Mods or something like that so you don't fill up the entire chest. This is a compact setup that I might use if I am having a temporary arrangement, but later on I definitely want to use a modular setup. Now the biggest of these is over here, but they all tend to use the same uh, type of setup. So what I've done is I have converted the single reactor setup into a long one. Now this long design uh, comes from uh, Mike uh, who also has created many many other blueprints. He loves to optimize things and he's come up with this very nice very compact design and he's based it on basically having the maximum amount of throughput for water, which I'll get into later. But this is the single reactor design if you want to do the expandable setup. Now, um, if you need more power in your factory, you can go to a two reactor design. Now, nuclear reactors are special because once you place them next to each other, they have a neighbor bonus, as you can see on the right. Now, um, instead of this being two times 40 megawatts, these actually are having a neighbor bonus, which doubles their production. So these produce 160 megawatts instead of 80, uh, both together. So these also, they're also fed from the chests and 
For these, we're going to need uh, 16 heat exchangers and 27 turbines. Now we're also going to need at least two pumps of water, which um, I have, oh, apparently I forgot to connect the water. Let's just do that. I shortened this just for the sake of saying, okay, if you don't have enough materials to build all of these heat exchangers, then you can shorten it a little bit. But uh, these have just about, these have exactly the correct number of turbines, which we need. And that is 27. So for two reactors, you need 27 turbines and 16 heat exchangers and at least two pumps of, or well, just over one pump of water, so two um, for de water delivery. Now, once you get to four nuclear reactors, you get an even bigger bonus because your neighbor bonus is now 200%. Uh, this array will produce 480 megawatts, which is why nuclear power is so powerful. You keep getting these really nice bonuses when you add even more uh, next to each other. Now you might think, oh yeah, well, I'll just add some all over the place, but you can't actually do that. If you try to do like a, um, let's see, like this kind of a thing where, oh yeah, I'm just going to connect them like this. Uh, you can't do that. They won't get the bonus because they have to be on the full side connected to the other reactors like this. You know, the full side is connected. That's the only way you can get the bonus. Anyway, with four reactors, you will need 48 heat exchangers and 83 turbines. So what I've done here is I don't know how, let's see, let's see how many of these I'm using this lovely design and it is exactly 48 heat exchangers. And let's just check the turbines. I think it's a little bit short on turbines. Yeah, it's 80 turbines, but I didn't want to put another column here. So I'm just happy to let that be that because once you start needing power from nuclear to you know, power your moduled factories, you're going to add a bunch more at a time, not just worry about little piddly bits and pieces. Now, six reactors. Um, gives you the maximum bonus uh, in the middle ones. So these guys, as you can see, get a 300% bonus. So every time you add an extra two, like if you add these two onto here, um, say for example, like this, if you grip these and you add them onto here, basically it makes these two the middle ones. So every time you add more middle ones, you are going to add 32 heat exchangers and 55 turbines. This array of six uh, needs 80 heat exchangers and 138 turbines um, and produces 800 megawatts of power. Now this design is very, very expandable. Um, let me just show you the back end of this where it is connected. So the water runs under the, the power poles and those connect, of course, to water pumps out here. And each of these uh, pipes only needs one water pump and it consumes every single bit of water that these pumps generate basically which is a very very handy design it's extremely efficient and these can be tiled for quite a long ways uh, the next one you could do uh, would be something like let's grab this blueprint I love blueprinting from space it's absolutely fantastic um, but yeah you could essentially if you are worried about the distance that the heat travels, as, but though, as you can see, the heat is still quite high here, though we're not using all of the power, but you could place them like this, you know, get your, your, your guys lined up there in, in, a, in an array like this and have the, the uh, turbines and the heat exchangers on the other side. So there's all kinds of ways to place this and you can have a massively long array. Now, Mike tells me that with robo ports, you can have up to 20 reactors, but with belts, you can have up to 50. Uh, those are his calculations. In any case, I will put all of these blueprints in the Google Drive so you can access those if you like. Um, and make sure that you have an output for your empty fuel cells. Now those things look like, uh -huh, they look like this. These are used up uranium fuel cells and I've got this network here, taking them out of the uh, active provider chests and basically putting them back on the train for delivery back to the main factory where they can get reprocessed.
So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Check out the blueprints in the Google Drive. That information is in um, the description below, the link to the drive. So um, I hope you find it there. And if you want to chat about it, please come to my Discord. Mike hangs out there and I do as well. Um, anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you next time.